Hello! In this video, we're going to talk about general solutions to linear ordinary differential equations. So the most general linear ordinary differential equation that one can write down is this, dy dx plus p of x times y is equal to r of x, where p of x and r of x are some functions. And the surprising thing is that this can be solved, in quotation marks here, for any p of x and r of x. And I'll explain the quotation marks uh, in a little bit on what we mean by a solution. But let's first start with a simpler case, the homogeneous case where r of x is equal to zero. So the homogeneous case, called because uh, the equation is homogeneous in y, it's linear in y, uh, is much simpler to solve. In fact, you can solve it directly by separability. So solving this by separability, we can write the solution as integral dy over y is equal to minus the integral of p of x dx plus some constant. I'm actually just going to rewrite that integral of p of x dx as some new function h of x. We know it can be done for any given function that somebody gives me, p of x. I can just take the integral of it, and I get the function h of x. It's just going to be simpler to write it that way. The solution, then, is y of x is equal to e to the minus h plus c, or I can just pull that constant out in front as an overall multiplicative constant. I'm going to call it big C now. So I have a solution y of x is equal to big C e to the minus h of x. And remember, h of x is defined as the integral of p of x dx. So this is the general solution for the homogeneous case, but that was the easy case. What if the r of x function is not equal to zero? So in that case, we have this differential equation, and it turns out there's a trick to solving this differential equation that allows us to solve it pretty quickly. So the trick is we're going to multiply by the function e to the h of x, where h of x actually is the same thing that we just defined. h of x is the integral of p of x dx. Notice that this means that h prime is equal to p of x. That's exactly what we mean when we say that h of x is the antiderivative of p of x. So why am I multiplying by h of x? Because it's a trick. That's what we do. Um, and so this is the particular magic in this trick. And we'll see that it really simplifies things. So let me just substitute in for p of x that p of x is equal to h prime. I haven't done anything else here. Except now, if I look at the left-hand side, I can actually condense this down. Because it turns out the entire left-hand side is just the derivative with respect to x of the product of e to the h times y, interesting enough. So that's really cool, because now I can actually solve this differential equation by separability. So I can move the dx over to the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side I just have d of the combination e to the h times y. And so on the right-hand side I have an integral e to the h of x, r of x dx, and plus some unknown constant over there as well. And that integral on the right-hand side looks kind of nasty. I have to know what h of x and r of x are in order to do it, but okay, um, if I knew what those were, I could in principle do this integral. The left-hand side just becomes e to the h times y. That's after all what I mean by taking the integral of a differential here. It just becomes the object itself. So I have e to the h times y, is equal to the mess on the right-hand side. And so I'm almost there. Now I just need to solve for y of x by moving e to the minus h of x over to the right-hand side. So I have y of x is e to the minus h of x times this combination of the integral e to the h times r plus the constant c. Uh, and remember, h of x that we defined above was written as the integral of p of x dx. So this is the general solution to the linear ordinary differential equation. So I told you we can solve it for any p of x and r of x, and so here is what the solution looks like. Now, I can't guarantee you that the integrals are going to be easy to do. Generally, the integral to get h of x isn't too bad, but I can't guarantee that the integral of e to the h of x times r of x is a nice integral. It may not be a nice integral. It may be that you can't even do it by hand, uh, in analytically at least, but in principle a solution exists. And so we have found a in principle solution to this differential equation. Uh, actually doing the integrals is your job now. Okay, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the interpretation of these two solutions though. 
and try and get some intuition for what's happening here. So let's start with the homogeneous case. So in the homogeneous case, we had r of x is equal to zero. And so we had this rather simple looking solution, y of x is equal to c e to the minus h of x. Okay, we can think about this in a physics analog as a circuit consisting of a capacitor and a resistor. And there is a charge on the capacitor, capital Q of T, which is changing with time when I hook this circuit up. And it's changing according to a differential equation that comes from Kirchhoff's voltage law. We don't need to know the details of how we got this equation, but just that there is an equation that tells us about the behavior of the charge, capital Q, on the capacitor as a function of time. And it involves the derivative of the charge with respect to time, and then the natural response of the system. Uh, and that natural re response is determined by the RC constant, 1 over RC. And so in the linear ordinary differential equation, we can see the P of x times y term, you can think of that almost like the natural response of the system, of whatever physical system you have. It won't always be a circuit, it may be something else, but it should be the natural response. The solution then is then also, I'm gonna call the natural response of this system to some initial conditions. How about the inhomogeneous case? In the inhomogeneous case, we had this more complicated looking expression for the solution y of x. Let me actually multiply the e to the minus h through. So then I get e to the minus h times the integral plus the constant times e to the minus h. So what does this correspond to in the language of circuits? So this could correspond to a circuit which has a capacitor, a resistor, and an AC input voltage, some time-dependent voltage, uh, which uh, um, is added into our circuit. And then the equation governing the charge on the capacitor as a function of time changes. It now has an external input term over on the right-hand side of V of T over R. And so the R of X term in the linear ordinary differential equation, you can kind of think of as an external input to your system. In that language, then, the first term in our nasty looking solution here, general solution, is the response to the external input. It's responding to the input R of X uh, in this particular way. And actually you notice we have uh, added to that the natural response of the system to the initial conditions. So that natural response is already cooked into our solution. So we take a sum of the natural response and the response to some external input. So I hope that gives you some intuition about what this general solution is trying to tell you.